deciding on the best spells is very difficult. Different spells are useful in different types of situations. Fireball can obliterate a horde of orcs, but it does nothing to solve the riddle that will open the ancient king's tomb. Conjure animals is a great way to get some bestial allies, but its usefulness fades in a situation when you need to quietly hide from a squad of devils. So in this video, what I'm considering the best spells are those that most frequently and reliably provide substantial benefits. This is based on what I've witnessed throughout countless hours of gameplay, across a decade and a half of continuous campaigns, and also through reading other people's observations and posts that are made in online forums. This ranking focuses specifically on abjuration spells, those which negate, remove, or block. It is protection magic, and it has both passive and aggressive effects. Number 10, Anti-Magic Field. There are very few effects in D&D that completely negate magic. Uh, Beholder's Central Eye, an Astral Dreadnought's Central Eye, and this spell. These represent a few of the very rare instances of this type of effect. In the Anti-Magic Field, spells do not function. Magic items become mundane. Summoned creatures and objects blink out of existence, and even some constructs will go inert. Against spellcasters, this is essentially the ultimate counter. The spell creates a 10-foot radius of anti-magic which radiates from the caster. Thus, you can walk through an exploding meteor swarm, or scoff at a ray of disintegration. It also negates other magical effects, which is largely left up to the DM to decide. For example, does a Medusa's gaze affect someone who is protected by anti-magic? I would say the gaze is magic. It's not like her eyes are shooting out wet concrete onto the targets. It's a supernatural effect. In a world of magic, a spell that completely shuts down all magic is just so potent, so striking. Number nine, restoration. There are a number of different debilitating effects in D&D, but luckily there are also spells to counteract them. Restoration is technically two separate spells, lesser restoration and greater restoration. They harness the magic of positive energy and restore the target from some nasty conditions such as poison, paralyzation, blindness, curses, exhaustion, petrification, and energy drain, which in 5th edition is the effect that decreases the target's maximum hit points. A number of conditions means certain doom, or at least a higher risk for catastrophe. Restoration is one of those relief spells that can rescue the target from the brink of devastation. Number 8. Invulnerability. Only the most powerful of wizards get access to this mighty spell, and it comes with a component cost of 500 GP worth of adamantine dust, but its effect is the end-all, be-all of damage prevention. For 10 minutes, the caster becomes completely immune to all damage. Yes, you can still be turned to stone. You can still be banished to a different plane, polymorphed into a worm, but if your enemies are trying to hurt you, they will do no more damage than gnats buzzing at a rhinoceros. For vast numbers of enemies, this spell completely shuts down their wind condition. Number seven, Absorb Elements. Absorb Elements is only a first level spell, but that truly is the beauty of it. Most spellcasters will almost always have a first level spell slot to spare. As a reaction, whenever you take elemental damage, which is acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder, you can gain resistance to that damage type until the start of your next turn. If you find yourself suddenly struck by a lightning bolt or blasted by a dragon's fire breath, absorb elements will ensure that you do not take the full brunt of the damage. And as an added perk, the first melee attack you hit with on your next turn deals 1d6 extra damage of that absorbed type. While Protection from Energy is the classic spell that resists elemental damage and it lasts for up to an hour, it requires both an action to cast and concentration. 
Absorb elements being just a reaction is so handy. Number six, pass without trace. D&D has a number of great spells that help you keep hidden, and Abjuration has a really good one at only second level. Pass without trace lasts for up to an hour with concentration, and it affects both you and any ally within 30 feet of you. You gain a tremendous plus 10 bonus to stealth checks. You leave behind no tracks, and you cannot be tracked by anyone except by way of magic. Pass Without Trace is a spell that can greatly aid your entire party throughout your entire adventuring life, from low to high level. Anytime you need to discreetly pass through an area, escape without being followed, or even set up an ambush, this spell sways the chance of success heavily in your favor. Unless your opponents have magic that specifically counteracts the benefits of Pass Without Trace, your whole party's stealth capabilities become simply incredible. Number five. Protection from Evil and Good, another low-level spell that is tremendously beneficial. Whenever an aberration, celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead attacks the protected creature, the attack suffers disadvantage. Furthermore, the recipient of the spell cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed by such creatures. If the target already is affected by one of these conditions, they then gain advantage on the saving throws to end the effect. Now, the spell is somewhat situational. It does nothing against beasts, constructs, dragons, humanoids, giants, monstrosities, plants, and oozes. But the creature types it does affect are really affected. Disadvantage on all attacks is already very potent. Then you add in the anti-condition protection to boot. A ghost cannot possess the target. A succubus cannot dominate. A mummy cannot terrify. Two of a beholder's eye rays become harmless as do two of a satyr's pipe melodies, etc. For first level spells, it's rarely that one gets as good as this. Number four, Dispel Magic. Nearly every spellcasting class has access to Dispel Magic, and it is such a universally helpful spell to have in your arsenal. With this spell, you can cancel out ongoing spell effects. You can also typically shut down magical traps with it too. When cast at its baseline third level slot, Dispel Magic automatically removes all spell effects of third level or lower from one targeted creature or object. If you upcast it, it does the same for higher equivalent spell levels, but it gets even better. Let's say you cast a third level Dispel Magic against a fire monster summoned by an enemy mage only to discover, oh, my foe used a fifth level slot to cast the Conjuration. Well, all is not lost, because in such an instance, you roll a spellcasting ability check against DC 10 plus the target spell's level. Say you're a bard with a 18 charisma, you thus have a plus four bonus against a DC 15 in the case of that fifth level conjuration. That's a 50% chance of success. In fact, come to think of it, said bard probably has jack of all trades and adds half his proficiency bonus to this check, tilting the odds slightly more in his favor. If you've played D&D for any length of time, you have undoubtedly noticed that spells can cause very potent effects that greatly alter the course of a battle. Being able to end such spells is simply too good to pass up. Number three, Banishment. This spell is one that you may hear people refer to as being overpowered. And there is a reason that some folks claim so. With Banishment, if the target fails a Charisma saving throw, it is teleported to a different plane of existence. The spell lasts for one minute and requires concentration. If the target is native to the plane you are currently on, it goes to a harmless demi-plane and is incapacitated there. If the target is native to a different plane, however, it returns to its home plane. The target remains banished for the duration of the concentration, and if you concentrate on it for the entire length after that one minute of uninterrupted concentration, a native creature returns, but a non-native creature remains banished, it remains on its home plane. In either case, banishment is a potent control spell that removes threats entirely. When upcasting it, you can target additional creatures as well. If the enemy forces are unable to knock you out of concentration, 
they are going to be out of one or potentially more of their members for most or even all of the fight. Then if the target was native, it returns back to find itself perhaps alone or at least with reduced allies. It's also a challenging spell to dispel. If the target itself cannot cast Dispel Magic, there's really no way for one of its allies to cast Dispel on it as it's not there to target. I have criticized 5th edition for not giving spellcasters enough non-direct damage spells that they can use to disable or otherwise defeat enemies, but Banishment is an exception, and a mighty exception at that. Number 2. Shield Humble first level shield. It is a simple spell with a straightforward effect. When you would be hit by an attack, you immediately create a shield of force as a reaction, gaining plus five to AC until the start of your next turn. It also nullifies magic missiles cast at you. Shield is a spell that is simply practical and highly useful over and over again throughout the course of an entire adventuring career. It is one of the most frequently cast spells that I've ever seen, and it is a staple for mages who want to survive. Number one, Counterspell. Similar to Dispel Magic in a way, Counterspell actually stops a spell before it even takes effect. As a reaction, you target a creature that is in the process of casting a spell. If the target spell is third level or lower, it fizzles out, it doesn't even take effect. If the spell is 4th level or higher, you must attempt that spell casting ability check like we saw with Dispel Magic. As before, you can also upcast the counter spell to automatically counteract spells of equal level. Like in Magic the Gathering, a counter spell can be a total trump card. You need to heal that badly wounded ally? Mm, nope. You're trying to cast a fireball to roast my whole squad? Denied. Any spell you can think of, as long as the caster is within 60 feet, it can be shut down entirely. Do keep in mind, however, that if the target also knows counter spell, he can counter your counter, even while in the midst of casting. In my home campaign a few months back, the party was in a powerful secret mages college. They had a number of combat encounters with some enemy wizards and magic users. Wow, what an experience seeing all these spell slinging battles and multiple counterspell storms. So, looking at abjuration spells, it's clear to see that they're not always as flashy as other types of magic. But there are some really great and unique spells in this school. Like other types of magic, they have the potential to drastically shape the progress of an encounter or an adventure. Also, I would like to tell you to not forget to check out my Patreon page. I release free dungeon maps and a monthly newsletter, and my patrons get entire sets of maps and custom monsters and more. Your support enables me to create more content and give you all rewards in return. A big cheer to all my patrons, in particular, Adam Wood, Warser, Dennis Cropper, Vince the Fallen Demon, and Nick the Pirate King. Thanks for watching everyone, and may your adventures be many.